a trip and see Hanukkah falls and everything. Hanukkah falls and their mother and dad went on their honeymoon. I hope they're still there. <laughs> well, Henry, I brought this bride of yours into the world and I've just given her away the ceremony. And, and if she isn't good to you, Henry, just give her right back to Dr. Christian. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Notre Dame could use you as a quarterback. Well, anyway, I got the bouquet. Well, so did I. <laughs> well, I guess it's a little late for introductions. Hello, Dr. Christian. Bill Ferris, how are you? Fine. Wonderful blood, Kitty. Bill was the universal blood donor at the medical clinic in Chicago last year. Yeah, I got my picture in the paper and everything. <laughs> By the way, Doctor, how did that fellow turn out, the one I gave the transfusion to? Oh, he got along fine. <laughs> but he passed off. <laughs> <laughs> now, buck up, Bessie. She isn't dead, you know. Well, you just wait till you lose your only daughter. Well, I'd love to lose her. Oh, I mean marriage, of course. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Darling, you caught the bridal case. That's perfectly wonderful. <laughs> Martha, I'd like you to meet Bill Ferris. Oh, how do you do, how Mr. You do? Ferris? <laughs> Bill is a reporter on the Chicago Daily. Oh, really? Well, I hope no one's been murdered in River's End, and I haven't heard about it. I think you would have heard about it, Martha. Oh, well, I, I'm not on the... Oh, uh, or perhaps you've come to write us all up. We're doing perfectly wonderful things here in River's End, aren't we, Doctor? Yes, Martha. Wonderful. Uh, Doctor, George has been complaining because you haven't dropped in for a game of checkers lately. Oh, well, tell him I'll be around one of these nights. Real soon. And you must bring this charming young man with you. Must it be, Kitty? Uh, oh, yes. Yes, of course. Thank you. I'd love to come. <laughs> then it's all arranged. Uh, Kitty, we must hurry along. <laughs> be sure, Doctor, don't forget. Real soon. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Phil. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'd be glad to give you a lift. You sure won't take you out of your way? Not at all. <laughs> Bill, uh, what are you going to do in Riverstone? So... Um, Special story for your newspaper? Oh, I'm not with the newspaper anymore. I'm advance man for Professor Kenneth Parker. He's an expert on diet and physical culture. Oh, that's very important work. What was the name of that woman and her daughter you introduced me to? Browning. Big shots in Rivers End? I suppose you might call them that. George has the largest grocery store in town, and Martha, well, she's president of the 20th Century Foods Club, Women's Club. Book Review Society, you know, that sort of thing. Hey, sounds like she ought to be able to do me some good. She might. Martha's a nice woman. Say, uh, isn't this rather a come down from newspaper work? <laughs> you can't come down from newspaper work. And where's Jason, a fire engine going to get you? And uh, this is going to get you someplace? Now, look here, Doc. Every woman in America is diet conscious today. You believe in diet and exercise, don't you? Oh, don't misunderstand me. Both are excellent in moderation. But... Well, there you are. I tell you, there's money in this racket. Plenty. I see. It's a racket. Well, everything's a racket. And you ought to see this in operation. That'll be interesting. Oh, keep it, keep it. And uh, you could stand to lose a little of that, you know. Well, it's been such a good friend to meet Phil. Let me keep it. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Christian. How do you do, Dr. Christian? Here you are, girls, all for nothing. Next week, a set of dishes. <laughs> he's cute. So's Professor Parker, and he's got muscle. <laughs> Look. <laughs>
afternoon, Mrs. Hastings. Sit down. Is the doctor in? These are the doctor's office hours. Is this something of a social call? Oh, no. I'm not at all well. Really, I'm not. I never know it to look at you. Hello, Kitty. Hello, Judy. She says she's sick. Oh, it's not that I'm sick. I mean, exactly. Well, you can't be both, you know. You're either sick or you're not sick. Better make up your mind. Hello, Kitty. Hello. What seems to be the matter with you? Well, I don't know. I feel awful. Come on, stop fussing around. Sit down. Any aches or pains? No, I, I just can't sleep and I toss around all night. You don't say. Well, let's take your blood pressure. Take off your coat. Better try a single file. <laughs> Is Dr. Christian in? Yes, he'll see you in a few moments. <laughs> well, you seem to be bearing up pretty well for a person who does to sleep. Well, that young man I met at the train, what was his name? You mean Bill Ferris? Oh, yes, Ferris. Is he still in town? I think so. Do you know if he's going to be here very long? I don't know. Shall I ask him? Oh, no. And don't be imagining things. <laughs> you know, Kitty, I think you are a very sick girl. It's heart throbbing. Oh, Dr. Christian, you make me so angry. Well, nobody can keep anything from you. Bill Ferris doesn't mean a thing to me. It's just that any new face in River's End is kind of exciting. I wouldn't get too excited if I were you, Kitty. Sometimes we get hurt that way. However, don't worry. Cases such as yours have a way of curing themselves. <laughs> well, thanks, Dr. Christian, for your diagnosis. <laughs> All right, darling. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello, girls. Come in. Mrs. Brooks. No? It's uh, the Mason twins. Oh, <laughs> oh Dad. <laughs> it's got Kitty. It isn't time to go home already. You're right. Oh, Mother wants you to bring home some cream. All right. Be with you in a jiffy. Why, Miss Browning, this is a pleasant surprise. <laughs> Why, Mr. Ferris. I didn't know you were still in town. Oh, you can't get rid of me that easy. I, I'm going to be here for some time yet. Well, how's the world been treating you? I can't complain about a single thing. Oh, that's swell. Uh, oh, hello, Dad. Uh, this is Bill Ferris. How do you do? I'm glad to know you. I, I'm going to be dropping in on you real soon, if I may. I have a little business matter I'd like to talk over with your mother. Oh, why not make it now? Well, uh, why not come home with us for dinner? Oh, really? Oh, nonsense. Come on along. One more or less never makes any difference in our house. Oh, gee, that'd be swell. I'd love to. <laughs> After all, we get all the food for nothing. Uh, <laughs> I wish we did, the way you and your mother eat. You're really tired. Uh, I do. No wonder. You should have taken that vacation early this summer. Oh, I'm planning to get away in a few weeks now. I had a letter from Center City today. Dr. Webster says he can take over for me while I'm gone. Well, this time, see that you do go. Here's your paper, Doctor. All right. 
Well, it's time you were resting. Now you just relax until dinner's ready. Oh, I'm too lazy to read, I guess. Well, here it is. Uh, getting sick of his muscles. You're just jealous. Professor Kenneth Parker will arrive in River's End Wednesday, November 2nd, to give a series of lectures on diet and classes and physical training. Listen to this. The Parker method guarantees to reduce weight 20 to 25 pounds in one month. He doesn't say that, Judy. Well, it certainly does. Hail look for yourself. Hello? Yes? Oh, yes, Mrs. Pearson. Is it urgent? I see, Doctor hasn't had his dinner yet. And... I'll talk to her, Judy. Oh, just a minute. Doctor's coming. Now, find out if it's serious before you say you'll go. You know, the Petersons live way out in the country. Yes, Mrs. Peterson. Oh, has your temperature? Pain in the abdomen, right or left side? I see. I'll be there as soon as I can make it. Uh, use an ice bag till I get there. There's your bag and your hat. Right. Oh, don't forget, you still have your slippers on. Yes, that's so. But your dinner's ready. Put it in the oven and keep it warm till I get back. Well, I might as well let everything dry up in the first place. Nothing's ever fit to eat anyway by the time yes. he gets it. Don't forget your shoes. Telling us about Professor Parker sounds perfectly intriguing. Well, Parker is certainly a wizard on the reducing diet and physical culture business. You should see some of the streamlined jobs he's turned out. Hmm. Isn't that wonderful, George? I'd love to be streamlined again. You never were streamlined, Mama. You were fat even as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and I wish you'd stop calling me Mama. Makes me feel twice as fat. Oh. <laughs> I'll give Mr. Ferris some more chicken and fries. Oh, no, thank you, really. I've never eaten such food nor so much of it in my life. I'm warning you, Bill. You better save room for Annie's pie. It's famous. I am. You better have some more chicken. Oh, no, thanks. Parker really. isn't in town yet. <laughs> uh, by the way, yes, when does Professor Parker arrive? About the middle of the week, which reminds me, I wanted to ask you, where would be a good place for the professor to lecture? Oh, the women's club, by all means. By the way, I could arrange a meeting and get every woman in town to attend. That would be splendid, Mrs. Browning. George, can you imagine me a perfect 36 again? No. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> this is good. Oh, what do you do in this town for amusement? There's dancing at the Rumba Club. That sounds great. Why don't we go? I'd love to. George, dear, couldn't we drop in later? I've never rumbled. Oh, now, Martha, wouldn't I look fine with a handkerchief over my hips and doing that? <laughs> <laughs> You can really dance. You're not so bad at it yourself. <laughs> Would you like a cold drink? I'd love it. <laughs> I'll have a barbecue beef sandwich and a double chocolate malt. Why well, made? Why the whistle? How do you do it? Do what? Eat again after all. It's none of my business, but don't you think you're overdoing it a little bit? I don't eat, but I'm hungry. Dancing makes me hungry. Well, then maybe you dance too much. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, though. You know, you are a little bit on the plump side. Look, you want to get your man, don't you? Well, here's the answer to all your problems. What are you looking at? Jeepers, you mean a girl was actually born like that? No, indeed. That beautiful figure is a result of diet and exercise. Look at that, they all go for it. <laughs> How long are you going to be in town? Uh, just three weeks from the day Professor Parker arrives. Why? Oh, nothing. I just wondered.
Mrs. Browning, may I present Professor Parker? How do you do? <laughs> Professor Parker, this is such a pleasure. I've heard so much about you. Thank you. I have all the ladies waiting in there patiently. Splendid. <laughs> Come right along. <laughs> Club members, ladies, it gives me great pleasure to present Professor Kenneth Parker <laughs> and his lovely assistant, Miss Carol Compton. <laughs> now, if you don't mind, Mrs. Browning, we're not going to be formal today. I want to have a little chat with just you. <laughs> now, let's talk for a moment about woman's birthright, health and beauty. You all have beauty, you know that, don't you? <laughs> I suppose some of you have noses you don't like. Oh, my own has always been a source of disappointment. Or perhaps our hair is not all that we could wish for. But believe me, dear ladies, these things don't matter. Really, they don't. What matters is the radiance of the inner you, the health and confidence, the poise of the perfect body. Perhaps some of you have soft, cute little cushions here or there that you want to get rid of. Well, we're going to get rid of them together with the help of Carol here. She conducts the courses in physical culture, under my personal supervision, of course. She herself will tell you that she was a stylish stout before she fell into my clutches. <laughs> I myself was one of those fat, awkward young fellows listless, without energy, until one day I said to myself, I will not be like this. I want physical perfection. <laughs> well, I've tried. <laughs> and now, dear friends, that's all I'm going to say to you today. I know we'll have other chats and get better and better acquainted in our quest for health and beauty. And now, Miss Compton will take over and give you some information about the courses. Thank you very much. Thank you. Professor, 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 you were only joking. When you said that once you were fat and awkward? Oh, I assure you, dear ladies, it's quite true. Well, perhaps you didn't have the right tailor. <laughs> Professor, Professor Parker, I was thinking, of course, I wouldn't want the Chamber of Commerce to know I said this. But the hotel here in Rivers End, well, it isn't... I thought it might be nice for you to stay at our house while you're in town. We do our utmost to make you comfortable. Oh, uh, that's really delightful of you, Mrs. Browning. I'd love it. And it's all settled. <laughs> <laughs> and the course consists of eight lectures and daily classes and physical training. Now, if you'll just enroll, please. Oh, oh Mrs. Browning. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I wonder if there's a desk somewhere I could use. Uh, well, there's a, one in the garage, but it's an awfully old-fashioned thing. I'm sure it would do very nicely. Mm -hmm. uh, Ed, uh, would you and Mr. Ferris help me bring in that old desk from the garage? Okay. <coughs> oh, Carol, would you bring down my diet papers, please? Dr. Chris, I didn't know you played checkers. Well, I play at it. Oh, uh, Dear old Ed was just crazy about checkers. He taught us to play. You must come over to our house sometime and have a game. Yeah. Right in this way, right here. Um, come on, come on. Oh, where do you want? Well, right here. Uh, uh, George, dear. Uh, I'm awfully sorry, but I'm afraid the desk will have to go right here. <laughs> really a shame, Dr. Christian, the way I keep disturbing you. It's all in the interest of health, Martha. Uh, uh, Bill, bring me 
in one of those dining room chairs. Pardon me. Oh, yes, that's my new exerciser. Uh, just put it any place for the time being. Uh, Bill, I think we'd better put the uh, rowing machine by the staircase and the exerciser in its place. Yes, ma'am. What are you doing here? Let me have a look at that eye of yours. Oh, the beefsteak is all we need. Oh, the only thing we got in this house is that meatless meatloaf. I'm gonna sue you for damages. Oh, Ed, you wouldn't do that. This isn't Mr. Browning's fault. That's his house. Not anymore, it isn't. Come on, Bill, we've got to be going. Okay. I better change your mind, Kitty, and come along. No, thanks. Well, see you later. Don't worry, Kitty. <laughs> I think we've done enough moving for tonight. Not yours. So nicely, too. Well, courage, courage. <laughs> oh, so you want to be a doctor when you grow up, eh? No, aviator. An aviator. Well. Hello, Elma. Hello, doctor. Not at work today? Not today, no. <laughs> well, hello, baby. He looks fine, eh? Oh, he's all right. Bessie looks sick. Well, I better take a look at her. Hello, Bessie. What seems to be the trouble? I don't know, Doctor, but she's been dieting against my wishes. Oh, one of Professor Parker's clients, eh? No, I'm not. The only reason she isn't is because we can't afford it. But she got the diet all right. From Mrs. Browning's maid. Oh, that's one of the dangers. Class halt. Class dismissed. Oh. 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 
pounds. How much have you lost? Ten pounds. Lucky kid. Well, I've still got lots to get rid of, though. Here's our prize winner. She's lost ten pounds. I've gained two pounds. Oh. Why don't you cut oh. your diet down? Half portions, I did. How could I eat any less than I do? I'm so weak now. I can hardly stand up. And you know, Tom is so mean about it. Well, do what I do. What? Tell your husband you're trying to look beautiful for his sake. Uh, yeah, I told him that and he said I look perfectly awful. Oh, just like a man. They never appreciate anything you're trying you to do for them. Great Scott, I've gained five pounds. Those little girls are getting nowhere fast. <laughs> Well, I'm exhausted. You're exhausted. I'm the one that gets the workout getting them up onto their feet. <laughs> Come in. Oh, hello, Dr. Christian. How do you do, Mr. Parker? Sit down, won't you? Thank you. I'm sorry you didn't come earlier. I'd like you to see my class. I've already seen a number of your class this morning. That's why I'm here. I don't believe I get you. Parker, I'm going to ask you to tone down your treatments a bit. <laughs> What's the matter? Are you upset because I'm stealing your trade? My trade, as you call it, is most active. In fact, I've never had so many sick people on my hands all at once. Frankly, you're doing a great deal of harm at this town. The first night we met, if I remember correctly, you expressed your dislike for the profession I represent. I'm sorry to say I don't think you represent it. It's been my business to know several men of that profession and admire them for the fine, legitimate work. But this wholesale business of yours, prescribing generally, regardless of the age or physical condition of the individual, is all wrong. Now, wait a minute. Be a little reasonable. After all, this is a four weeks course. I couldn't possibly take these people one by one. That's the point exactly. It can't be done that way. These people are all going overboard in this thing. Well, I give them the proper instructions. It's no concern of mine if they go a little overboard. Apparently not. And apparently you are not interested. But I am interested. These people are my friends as well as my patients. I feel it a duty to protect them against something I'm convinced is harmful. So I'm doing them harm. I'm a faker. Yes. The way you're proceeding. I'm sorry, Dr. Christian, but I shall have to proceed as I think best. I shall continue my courses until they're completed. And I seriously doubt if it's in your capacity to do anything to stop me. And good day, Dr. Christian. Good day, Mr. Park. Honey, how am I going to get my bath? He's still in there. He's been in there for the last half hour. After all, George, you can't ask a guest to leave the bathroom. Oh, I could. If he can hear me. George, the way you're acting lately makes me so nervous I can fly. The way I'm acting? Oh, <laughs> the trouble with you is you're half starved to death, and it makes you hard to live with. Well, it's a fine thing when your own husband tells you you're hard to live with. Well, look, I said it and I mean it. Look, I'm going to be late for the store again. I tell you, it's got to stop. And I'll tell you something. If you don't stop this house is complaining, I'm going to leave the house. Well, somebody's going to leave the house. I'll tell you that much. I'll tell you. <laughs> You betcha. sort of hearty tray for Kitty this morning. I'm afraid she's been dying too strenuously. I said that a long time ago. That will do, Annie. Miss Kitty? Come. Your ma says you're to eat every bit of this, Miss Kitty. Thank you, Annie.
A good, good morning to you, Mrs. Browning. Good morning, Professor Parker. What are you going to have for breakfast this morning, Professor? Oh, just a little raw spinach and lemon juice, Annie, please. Same for me, too, please, Annie. Dear Mrs. Browning, pardon me if I trespass, but have you been crying? It's George. He's being very difficult. Ah, ah, ah. Now you owe it to your husband and yourself not to permit him to distress you. He'll thank you in the end. Professor Parker, I just can't tell you how much I admire and appreciate your attitude. Not at all, not at all. I understand. I'm sure everything will turn out for the best. There isn't any doubt of it. Good morning, all. Uh, good morning, Bill. Oh, uh, Professor, I brought these things for you to look over. Oh, fine. We'll take them upstairs to my room where we won't disturb the household. As if you ever did anything to disturb anybody in this household. <laughs> This morning, we're at the irate husband, tearful wife stage. But all in all, I suppose it's worth it. Caught. Cinnamon. Bill, I told you to get butter horns. Well, I couldn't get any. And if you don't mind, I wish you'd get somebody else to sneak this stuff in for you. I don't like it. Oh, don't be foolish. <laughs> How was your breakfast, dear? Very good, thanks, Mother. Fine. You know, Kitty, I think you really needed that. Well, I'm off on a few errands and then to the gym. I'd rather you didn't attend class today, darling. Just stay home and rest. <gasps> Kitty, I've never been so busy and so happy in all my life. The house full of people. Dear Professor Parker and, and Bill. You know, he's in there conferring with Professor Parker now. Well, I must run along. <gasps> Goodbye. Oh, bye, Mother. You get around early. Yeah, you know me, all business. How do you feel? I'm all right. Why? Well, you don't look all right. Oh, I don't. Well, no, you look as limp as a rag. And lately I've noticed that you've been losing all your pep. You're just accustomed to the society of Miss Carol Compton, that's all. Jealous? I certainly am not. If you think for one minute, Bill Ferris, I care what you do or where you go, who you go with, you're very much mistaken. Say, what's the matter with you? Not a thing. You just don't happen to interest me. Strange as it may seem to you. Well, if that's the way you feel about it. Well, well, it is. <laughs> oh, gee, Kitty, what ails you? I was only kidding. <laughs> oh, go away, leave me alone. <laughs> Kitty, I wish you'd tell me why you're crying. I can't go and leave you like this. I, well, I think too much of you. Uh, coming my way, Bill? Oh, yes. Look, I'll see you later, huh? Maybe we'll go dancing. going a little strong for the groceryman's daughter, aren't you, kid? I'm worried about her. She certainly has changed since I first met her. <laughs> this is the first decent order I've had in weeks. Is business slack? Slack? That's putting it mildly. You can shoot a canvas through this store any time and not hit a person. Everybody in the town's on a diet, including me. How are things at home? Oh, just about the same. Honestly, Doctor, I'm worried about Kitty. She acts like she didn't care whether the school kept or not. George, if I were you, I'd take a firm stand. Believe me, I intend to. Uh, can you manage all that? Oh, easy. Don't weaken now. 
You bet I won't. Hello, Doctor. Hello, Bill. Oh, oh. I'll oh, get it. Here, you better let me give you a hand with these. <laughs> Doctor, do you mind if I go along with you? There's something I'd like to talk to you about. I'm glad to have you. Hop in. Fine. Wait a minute, Bill. Only one here. Oh. The thing I was telling you about Kitty is that, well, she's just a different girl. When I first met her, she was full of life, always laughing and having fun. Well, perhaps I'd better drop in and see you. I wish you would, sir. I'll try to get along there this evening. Swell. Oh, well. come in, Doctor. Won't you come in, too, sir? Thank you. How are you? Fine, thank you. Hello, folks. Oh, Dr. Hello. 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 Just a brand I like. But I, I busted my pipe. Oh. There you are. Oh. Oh, my golly. It's a beauty. Oh. <laughs> thanks, Doctor. Where should I got to be going? Uh, thanks, Doctor. I am... Bye. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Bye. 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 I see there's more for doctors to do than just give people pills. Not only doctors, Bill. There's a lot for everybody to do. You mean build up and tear down? <laughs> <laughs> I got the game all set up. <laughs> oh, uh, do we move on to check up all tonight or all over the house? Oh, don't worry, don't worry. Everyone will be gone from the house in a few minutes, and then everything will be nice and quiet. Good. Good evening, gentlemen. Relaxing after a hard day's work? La, 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 la. Like to try it, Doctor? No. <laughs> How about you, Mr. Browning? Makes you feel very fit. I am fit for almost anything. Is it time for your lecture, Professor Potter? Oh, I'll just be a minute or two. Before they I run along and get the meeting called to order. It's such a pleasure to work with you, Mrs. Browning. Thank you, Professor. <laughs> oh, get that, will you, Bill? It's probably for me anyway. Right. Hello. Professor, oh, yes, he's here. Who is it? Mrs. Brooks. Oh, what does she want? Uh, what was it you wanted? She wants to know if she can use your rowing machine. Tell her certainly she can use it. He says certainly you can use it. She wants to know when she can come over. Oh, any time, any time at all. He says any time, any time at all. She wants to know if she can bring some friends. Sure, tell her she can bring as many as she likes. He says sure, you can bring as many as you like. <laughs> she says thank you. Tell her welcome. He says you're welcome. Okay, goodbye. Oh, it's time we were going. Bill, will you get my papers on tonight's lecture? They're in my room. Uh, don't disturb yourselves. Don't disturb yourselves. It's probably for me anyway. <laughs> Professor Parker? Yes. My name is Peabody, Professor. Come in, please. Thank you. What can I do for you, sir? I, I just wanted to ask you a little favor. Yes? See, I'm the scoutmaster at River's End, and I want to know if you'd give my boys a little talk on physical fitness. Delighted. Just bring the little men to the house anytime. Anytime? Anytime. Swear. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Get him out of here. 
Get him out of here. Get him out of here. Well, you don't mean that, Mr. Browning. Oh, yes, I mean it. Now clear him out. Clear him out. Scouts, attention. Assemble outside. That goes for you too, Professor. Get out and don't come back. Ever. Oh, very well. I never could cope with an elephant. Well, yeah. Uh... <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, uh, oh, Calm yourself, it's all over. Oh, no, it's not all over till every one of them are out of this house. Dad, don't say that. Look at you. Look what the diet's done to you. Get out. Well, Kitty, there's nothing much I can say except that I'm, I'm sorry for everything. Bye, Bill. She's still resting quietly. Did you find everything you need? Uh, or put the bread for some toast. Bread, I'll get it. You know, I didn't realize Kitty was that starved. Oh, don't worry. Let's fix the toast. What are these? Oh, some kind of seaweed stuff. Parker reducing pills. Martha and Kitty had taken them. Will you pour a glass of milk? Oh, yeah, sure. Let's get this food up to Kitty and see the tea leaks. I'll take it. Oh, we're going to have a sick girl on our hands. You don't look so hot yourself. Oh, nothing wrong with me, only I'm dog tired. So we find, insofar as the dextrinization of starch is concerned, this is pure fallacy. And ladies, that finishes our little talk for the... Except that I'd like to remark that I'm sorry to see so many empty chairs here this evening. Perhaps that's because so many of your clients are sick in bed. Friends, I want to take the liberty of saying a few words to you. You all know that for these past years, I've tried to advise you in the matters of health to the best of my ability. I want to advise you now. To follow the course in so general a sense as advocated by Professor Parker is most dangerous. Drastic reducing such as this should only be attempted under the careful supervision of a physician. Now we see what he's getting at, folks. The doctor, a good man, but possibly a little antiquated in his ideas, is alarmed for his own practice. For your own good, I urge you most earnestly to discontinue with these courses at once. Naturally, you must realize that this is strictly unethical. This is most unprofessional. Dr. Christian, the first time you met Professor Parker in my home, you were opposed to him. What right have you to interfere like this? Well, Martha, the right of your family physician, I guess. Well, you needn't bother about that any longer. The next time my family needs medical attention, I'll send for Dr. Webster. And that goes for me, too. I'm right in her. This is brutal. Well, Bill, I did my best. I'd like to see them all so thin, they'd quit breathing. Here's Dr. Webster. This is a fine thing. I thought you'd already left for your vacation. I can rest here as well as any place. There goes that phone again. So you can rest here as well as any place, eh? I know. You want to get me out of town so you can take all my patients away. 
<laughs> Dr. Christian's office. Uh, Judy, this is Mrs. Browning. Kitty's ill. I have Dr. Christian. Ask Dr. Christian to come over right away, please. Ask him to hurry. Here are your calls, Dr. Webster. This one from Mrs. Browning is rather urgent, I believe. Or 27 Oak Street. Yes. All right, Judy, thanks. Oh, Doctor, how do you find Dr. Christian? He's badly in need of rest. That's exactly what I've been telling him. Working himself to death for a lot of fools that don't appreciate him. The important thing is to keep him in bed. I'll try, but if he makes up his mind to get up, there isn't much I can do about it. Well, I can do plenty about it. <laughs> well, I'll drop back later, Judy. Thank you, Doctor. Oh, it's you, Dr. Webster. Yes. Well, where's Dr. Christian? I'm sorry, Mrs. Browning, but he's very ill. Uh, ill? Well, what's the matter with him? Well, overworked, principally. There's a limit to what even a doctor can take, you know. Uh, yes, I know. Um, uh, please come upstairs. Kitty, the doctor's here. Where's Dr. Christian? Now, now, Miss Kitty, you hurt my feelings. You know, I'm not such a bad fellow when you get used to me. How is Kitty today? I just come down to open the store. I'm going right home. I'm sorry. I do hope there'll be a change for the better. Thank you. Mr. Browning. Oh, I know you feel bitter toward me, and, and I don't blame you, but... I do wish you'd let me see Kitty for a few minutes. I, I, well, she might like to see me. Well, no one can see her. That's out of the question. What about the Markham case? She's doing splendidly. No temperature. And Kitty Browning, is she improving? Well? I'm afraid I can't give you a very encouraging report, Doctor. She hasn't an ounce of resistance. Yes, I know. She doesn't seem to be putting up any fight whatsoever. Well, that's rather unusual to me, in a girl of her age, I mean. That was your office on the phone, Dr. Webster, about Mrs. Bates. Oh, yes, that's a confinement. I'll have to hurry along. Dr. Christian's office. Oh, Mrs. Browning. Well, Dr. Christian can't possibly come. He's very ill. Yes, uh, Doctor, Kitty's thinking. I'm sure of it. I'll be right over. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Miss Hastings. Please call Judy and tell her to meet me at the Brownings as quickly as she can. But you can't go out. That's all there is to it. It should be the death of you. The doctor's first duty is not to himself, but to his patients. Please call Judy for me.
Yes, Doctor. I'm going out. I'll be back in a few minutes. To leave, Doctor. I'll be back shortly. I can't understand Dr. Chris just leaving Kitty at a time like this. All right, Bill, now let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Parker, your whole setup is phony. Why, if I'd really. Oh, drop it, will you? Drop it. Pour yourself a drink, it'll do you good. Come in. Get your overcoat and come with me. Well, where are we going? I'll explain the car. Hurry, it's urgent. You seem unduly agitated, Doctor. Nothing serious, I hope. Not to you, maybe. But a young girl is dangerously ill. Perhaps dying. As a result of your treatments. Now, we're not going into that again. This isn't the first time I've had trouble with you country doctors. I've analyzed the pills that you've been given these women and find that they contain benzedrine sulfate. And benzedrine sulfate cannot be prescribed except by a registered physician. I've reported this to the medical authorities and they'll see to that you do not practice your, your racket any further in this town or any other town. Let me handle this. Come along. Judy. This is a time for happiness, not tears. Doctor, you're a pretty sick man. You better get back to bed immediately. Don't forget you have Bill to thank for the transfusion. I'd like you to explain that too, Dr. Christian. Well, it was one day in my office last fall, 
when I discovered Kitty had heart trouble. <laughs>